president and founder of the Pennsylvania Breast Cancer Coalition. And I'm really thrilled and delighted about all of the participation on of the webinar this evening. We have really well over 100 of our members who are participating. And additionally, we have a number of doctors uh, from the uh, Eastern Medical Society of Pennsylvania who are participating as part of uh, their regional meeting. And I'd like to welcome them and say how pleased we are um, to be a part of what you are doing. And now I would like to introduce our presenter uh, for this evening, Dr. Edith Mitchell. She is the clinical professor of medical oncology at the Sidney Kimmel Cancer Center of Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. Dr. Mitchell is also a retired Brigadier General in the United States Air Force and was the first female doctor ever to obtain that rank in the history of the United States Air Force. And General Mitchell has been awarded over 50 medals of, uh, and honors, including the Legion of Merit. At Jefferson, uh, she is the recipient also of numerous awards, including the American Society of Clinical Oncology's Humanitarian Award for going above and beyond the call of duty in providing outstanding patient care. Dr. Mitchell is also the director of the Center to Eliminate Cancer Disparities uh, at Thomas Jefferson University. Dr. Mitchell is the leading expert on triple negative breast cancer, really in this country. She has been active not only at her own institution uh, doing research on this extraordinarily important issue, but also clinical trials on the national level. And she has chaired and been part of many important political uh, uh, preliminary trials on this issue. So I would like us now uh, to welcome uh, Dr. Edith Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell? Pat, thank you so much. And it is always a, a pleasure to work with the Pennsylvania uh, Breast Cancer Coalition and to uh, speak with individuals who are interested in this topic. So um, join with me and we will discuss triple negative breast cancer. I think you can see my screen and the slide. Uh, so these are our objectives this evening to discuss breast cancer statistics, uh, types of breast cancer, breast cancer treatment, triple negative breast cancer statistics, triple negative breast cancer treatment, and clinical trials. Um, the author, James Baldwin, said, know from whence you came. If you know whence you came, uh, there are absolutely no limitations to where you can go. And that's really important in understanding cancer because the National Cancer Institute uh, published earlier this year that there were steady declines in cancer death rates for the past two decades. And all of these add up to a 20% decline in the overall risk of dying in the United States. And that's very important information. For the year 2013, uh, we know that uh, approximately 1,660,290 new cases of cancer were diagnosed in this country. And unfortunately, uh, more than 580,000 people lost their lives to cancer, uh, but overall a decline of 20% over the last two decades, which means that this is very important for all of us because everyone can play a role in this. 
uh, certainly uh, for 200 uh, for 2014, the estimated new cancer cases indicate still that breast cancer is the number one expected cancer um, in women in this country. So very important. What we do know, however, is that the trend in death rates have shown that there is a decline in cancer death rates from many different cancers, and note the pink line indicating that there has been a decline in cancer death rates from breast cancer. What we have known over this entire period, however, is that there are differences in various populations in terms of uh, survival rates with breast cancer in this country. And it is well known that if one considers and compares death rates between African Americans and Caucasians, that there are uh, increased and disproportionate death rates in African American women. And that has been a question over the years. Uh, recognizing that these statistics have demonstrated that although the incidence of breast cancer is lower among African American women, that African American women have a higher mortality rate or higher death rate and a lower five-year relative survival. Uh, breast cancer in African American women is more likely to be diagnosed at a, an advanced stage when compared to Caucasian women, and survival rates are approximately 10 percentage points lower for African American women. Uh, Dr. Harold Freeman put together uh, some interesting information indicating that the cause of uh, cancer disparities uh, were related to a number of factors, including poverty and socioeconomic status, social injustice, the culture, uh, but emphasizing the gene environment of the cancer and how important uh, this was to be included in overall uh, cancer uh, diagnosis, treatment, and even in survivorship. And what we know now that um, the death rate for both African American women and Caucasian women uh, has declined, uh, but note that the gap between the two races has increased. So there has not been uh, equivalent information that has been gained from research and the application of that research to clinical practice. Uh, when we evaluate the receptors on breast cancer, uh, note that the three that are most commonly utilized are HER2, which occurs in 20 to 25 percent of breast cancers, and the estrogen and progesterone re uh, receptors occurring in 75 percent of breast cancers. It was very clear with the elucidation first of the estrogen receptor, uh, that there were differences in breast cancer. And now we know uh, that these differences in the receptors certainly can be reflected in the clinical presentation of breast cancer, uh, the overall follow-up and advancement of the disease in some women, as well as the response to therapy and for multiple therapeutic interventions that have been developed over the years. Uh, and therefore, when we speak about triple negative breast cancer, there is absolutely no expression of the estrogen receptor, the progesterone receptor, and the HER2 receptor. Uh, consequently, those drugs that have been utilized for treatment of breast cancer over the years and drugs that have demonstrated tremendous benefit in the management of the disease, therefore 
not being uh, effective in the utilization and treatment of women with triple negative breast cancer. And what do we mean by triple negative breast cancers? Uh, what do we see in this country? Triple negative breast cancers occur. Uh, they account for 15% of all breast cancers. They tend to be more aggressive, have higher recurrence rates, meaning that they uh, recur, our, our tumor comes back after effective, uh, what appears to be effective treatment. Their metastasis rapidly to key organs, such as the liver, the brain, uh, the lungs, and others. Uh, because drugs such as tamoxifen or the other uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors or um, Herceptin, for example, um, this, these treatments are not effective in treating the disease, and chemotherapy is currently the main treatment option. It is more common in young women, more common in African American women, uh, as well as Latino and Hispanics, and it is more commonly seen in those with BRCA1 uh, mutation. Uh, so 60 to 70 percent of breast cancers are positive for uh, estrogen and progesterone receptors, and about 15 to 20 percent are positive uh, for HER2 new expression, and 10 to 15 percent will be triple negative. There was a very nice study described some years ago uh, that included data from the National Cancer Database, and this is maintained by the American College of Surgeons. Uh, and this database uh, utilized data from about 70% of all breast cancer cases reported in the United States. And most of the hospitals in the United States participate in this. Uh, what was found, uh, that if one compared the um, responses and overall characteristics of breast cancer in African Americans and in Caucasian Americans, note that in yellow, the incidence of breast cancer in African Americans accounted for approximately 22% of the cases in women who were less than 45 years old. So younger women, uh, if one looked at the stage distribution of the patients with breast cancer, Note that African-American women tended to have more advanced stage, uh, stages two, three, and four at the time of diagnosis, whereas Caucasian women had uh, more earlier stage disease. Uh, there was also a preponderance of uh, poorly differentiated tumors, which are recognized as having a more aggressive disease. Um, the frequency of estrogen negative tumors was higher in African Americans, accounting for more than 50% of those tumors in women who were less than age 45. Uh, but also triple negative breast cancers being more commonly seen in every group of individuals of African American descent uh, no matter the grouping of the ages, whether less than 45 or greater than 80 years old. So in summary, the findings were younger age, more advanced stage at the time of diagnosis, an increased risk for very aggressive uh, cancers with a higher frequency of estrogen negative tumors, an increased frequency of high grade tumors, and all of these findings were consistent across all stages and income variables. Uh, there was a study conducted at Thomas Jefferson University, and our data also indicated that estrogen negative tumors were more commonly seen, uh, and we reported that there was a higher frequency of key 67 
which is known as a proliferative marker. So another marker that is not commonly utilized in breast cancer management, but in research showing that key 67 was more positive, had higher values in patients of African American descent. If one looks at also uh, cancers in uh, various racial and ethnic groups, um, in this slide, Caucasian, African American, Hispanic, and Asian and Pacific Islanders, note that triple negative breast cancers were more commonly seen in African Americans than in any other racial or ethnic group for which data were collected. So a higher number of these more aggressive tumors in African Americans. And to summarize again, uh, triple negative breast cancer is defined and clinically uh, representative in uh, the following. Younger women, African American origin, uh, BRCA1 mutation carriers, uh, more high-grade tumors, uh, the cancers tend to be larger, uh, later stage at diagnosis, and interval um, more uh, aggressive tumors with recurrent disease. They are sensitive to chemotherapy, but have a poor prognosis with earlier death rates and higher relapse rates after uh, apparently successful um, initial therapy. Uh, risk factors, we really don't know all of the risk factors, and these are a part of clinical trials and studies now. We do recognize that obesity, the lack of breastfeeding, uh, can uh, predispose to triple negative breast cancers. A higher number of births, especially at younger ages, and of course the BRCA1 mutations. And then there are a lot of questions and perhaps answers that we don't know uh, that are risk factors for development of triple negative breast cancer. It is well recognized that triple negative breast cancers tend to recur more frequently, and note that the recurrence tends to happen during the first three years after uh, treatment of breast cancer. So rapidly recurring disease after treatment. Uh, with molecular profiling, uh, it is recognized that uh, all cancers are different, and consequently, this has the gene, um, uh, the cancer genome atlas has allowed us to understand breast cancers more effectively and to understand that triple negative breast cancers tend to occur in the uh, basal range. However, it is recognized that while triple negative breast cancers uh, more frequently appear histopathologically as basal-like uh, and in molecular profiling, but not all basal-like tumors are triple negative. So various uh, uh, varying differences. And it is also recognized that PARP inhibitors, uh, which are drugs that inhibit DNA damage repair from radiation, chemotherapy, and other uh, treatments, uh, that PARP inhibitors may be very important in this group of tumors. Consequently, the group at Jefferson has established a very large uh, research program. These are some of the individuals participating with us. It is multidisciplinary, including surgery, uh, medical oncology, uh, molecular biology, statistics, uh, as well as pathology, with a large group of individuals studying uh, breast cancer with a focus on triple negative breast cancer. And what we do uh, is collect uh, tumors. We evaluate the treatment that patients have undergone and lots of other information, and we put this into what is called biomedical informatics, and that 
just utilizing computers to help us understand the breast cancer and to put things together. What that has allowed us to do is find a lot of information and characteristics of the patients with uh, triple negative breast cancer. So better understanding. And with understanding of breast cancer, we are also evaluating other markers in the laboratory. They have not become uh, the standard of care. I mentioned K67 earlier as one of those markers, but also this is a picture of one, and this is called phosphostat 5, uh, another marker that we are evaluating uh, with the goal of trying to define other markers, since we know that estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors and HER2 receptors are all negative in triple negative breast cancer, we're trying to find other markers that might help us identify these tumors and therefore develop treatments and interventions that might be successful. And one of those is the PARP inhibitor. Uh, so we have developed a clinical trial that is actively recruiting patients and actively treating patients at this time. This clinical trial involves the utilization of platinum agents. And platinum agents, while uh, it was thought that they were not very effective in the treatment of breast cancer, interestingly, they are very effective in treating uh, triple negative breast cancer. Uh, the PARP inhibitors, and we've incorporated these into what is called a neoadjuvant trial. And by neoadjuvant, it means that we are treating the patients prior to surgery. Uh, because these tumors tend to uh, be so aggressive, spread quickly to other organs in the body, and recur or come back very rapidly after treatment, uh, we want to utilize the chemotherapy and treatments prior to surgery, trying to eradicate and um, reduce the number of circulating tumor cells that might uh, metastasize later. So neoadjuvant trial with the chemotherapy given prior to surgical uh, resection of the breast cancer. We also utilize a number of biomarker studies including estrogen, progesterone, and HER2 receptors, but also evaluating the tumors for some of the newer receptors that we are utilizing in the laboratory. We also evaluate the number of circulating tumor cells in the blood, uh, trying to assess how these tumors tend to metastasize and spread so uh, rapidly. So a very remarkable and advanced trial that is a part of what we call personalized medicine. And with personalized medicine, we hope to give the right treatment or the right therapy for each patient uh, the first time. So trying to uh, define what is best for each patient uh, initially. This is an example of the clinical trial where we're utilizing MRIs and PET scans to help us with diagnosis. Uh, there are biopsy of the uh, breast cancer, a uh, uh, sample for circulating triple or circulating tumor cells uh, is utilized. And then the patients receive chemotherapy with some of the standard agents, such as paclitaxel, a platinum agent, uh, such as carboplatinum, and then the Liparib, which is a PARP inhibitor. So utilizing what we know um, has effectiveness in triple negative breast cancer, and we are utilizing all of these together to define the effectiveness of this overall uh, treatment plan for triple negative breast cancer. We have seen some interesting uh, results in the first in the uh, patients treated, uh, and this 
clinical trial is currently ongoing uh, at Jefferson uh, for patients with triple negative breast cancer. And what we're trying to show uh, is that uh, as we treat triple negative breast cancer, yes, we can say that uh, results are looking upward. And with looking upward, it's because we're bringing together this large group of researchers and investigators consisting of uh, our community and outreach um, individuals to bring this to the community so that we can provide it to a larger number of, of patients and individuals. We've developed partnerships with groups of individuals such as the Pennsylvania Breast Cancer Coalition to help us define and overcome the barriers to um, participation and the barriers to understanding uh, breast cancer in populations. We have brought together our basic scientists, uh, our clinicians and clinical scientists, as well as our statisticians and behavioral and epidemiologic uh, scientists to try and put this all together to um, increase our knowledge and understanding of breast cancer in populations and why triple negative breast cancer tends to be more frequently seen in uh, one group of patients as opposed to others. So trying to understand um, the characteristics of triple negative breast cancer, why it occurs in younger patients, why it occurs more frequently in African Americans uh, and others, so that we can hopefully find that this disproportionate share of death rates in breast cancer uh, will decrease and therefore uh, trying to develop more effective therapies uh, for treating triple negative breast cancer so we can uh, hopefully in the future see that all of our patients with breast cancer are doing better, living longer, and therefore we can say that results are looking up. Uh, so with that, I thank you so much for your participation uh, tonight in this webinar, and thank you for your attention and listening to us. And we will open uh, the uh, lines up for uh, questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. That was just wonderful. And uh, Dr. Mitchell, I would like to thank you not only for your leadership on this issue of triple negative breast cancer, but also bringing such valuable information uh, to the members of the breast, Pennsylvania Breast Cancer Coalition, which you've done through uh, workshops at our conferences and uh, medical articles that uh, go to all 65,000 uh, people uh, on our mailing list. So that's been so very helpful to us. And we have a number of our folks on this uh, webinar t tonight, as well as a number of physicians. And they have submitted some questions uh, to Erica uh, through the, uh, you know, through their computer. And she's going to be uh, raising some of those questions for your response. Uh, Erica? Yes, the first question we have here comes from Janet. She asks, if radiation is still a part of therapy? Uh, yes, radiation can be a part of the treatment of triple negative breast cancer. Uh, so it's utilizing all of these modalities together. Uh, in many cases, individuals um, may have lumpectomies with radiation, which is a part of standard uh, therapy. For triple negative breast cancer, there has been a focus on uh, chemotherapy, but yes, irradiation uh, can be a part of the treatment, part of the treatment for many patients, and is effective. Uh, and just as there is a rapid recurrence after chemotherapy, there can also be rapid recurrence of tumor after irradiation. 
Hey, thank you. Um, I have another question here um, about you know, choosing your hospital, evaluating a hospital to be treated for triple negative. What types of things should patients look for? So I think the important factors are many. Uh, number one, you would want to discuss this with your uh, primary care physician so that there uh, can be easy referrals to centers. Uh, one should ask the question uh, of whether there are clinical trials for triple negative breast cancer, and that is because the standard therapies uh, have been shown in many cases to be ineffective. So I think it's so important to receive treatment in a center where there is a larger number of triple negative breast cancers and where there are clinical trials uh, for patients with breast cancers. Because we don't know all of the answers now, and therefore it's very important to continue to uh, search for answers, to search for medications that are effective, and thereby to um, utilize all of the information that we know to um, uh, develop a program for triple negative breast cancer. So asking the question, how many patients with triple negative breast cancer does this hospital treat? Uh, are there clinical trials related to breast cancer? Um, and specifically, uh, triple negative breast cancer, and whether or not there are, are programs uh, specifically available for triple negative breast cancer. So you want to know if there's a focus on triple negative breast cancer at the hospital. Great. Um, I have another question here from Amy, and she says, what are your thoughts on using accelerated partial breast radiation in triple negative breast cancers? Uh, so um, accelerated radiation or partial uh, irradiation is a process uh, that we utilize for some patients with breast cancer. That can be incorporated into the overall program. Uh, one of the problems with triple negative breast cancer is that it metastasizes so rapidly and so early um, that many of the programs for irradiation of the breast um, may not be utilized. Again, it would be important to find out if that a uh, particular hospital or facility has all of these uh, modalities available. And rather than focus on one modality, before we actually treat patients with triple negative breast cancer, our group, which is multidisciplinary, gets together, discusses the patients, reviews all of the information, including the um, radiology studies, the mammograms, the MRIs if they're important, um, the PET scans if they're important to that patient. And we all get together to decide on a treatment plan. So it's not just one modality for treatment, uh, it's multimodality. I focused on the uh, chemotherapy because the radiation can be a totally different a lecture that's even more than an hour. So um, much of the research is focused on chemotherapy, which tends to be different. The radiation, uh, while it's effective for triple negative breast cancer, it's included in the regimen. It's no different for estrogen positive tumors uh, than uh, triple negative. Thank you for that. Um, I have another question here. This one comes from Linda, and she is asking um, when you think any of the PARP inhibitors will be approved by the FDA or their progress um, in that uh, lengthy process? Well, research continues with the PARP inhibitors as well as other uh, drugs, and I certainly would not try to uh, predict when the FDA will uh, review or approve 
so that's a long process, and I certainly would not even try to ascertain or predict when it would occur. But hopefully, uh, results will be summarized, results will be presented at medical societies, and will be continuously reviewed. So I hope we will have uh, some medications that will be important for treating patients with triple negative breast cancers, and that there will be success. And of course, if there is success in treatment, uh, then it would be up to the FDA and other agencies to review and to um, approve as appropriate. So success in the clinical trials, participation in clinical trials, uh, this is what we're trying to accomplish. I have a question now from Mary, and she is asking the difference between PARP inhibitors and PD-1 inhibitors. Uh, so those are different compounds. The PD-1 inhibitors are utilized in other tumors. Um, they can be utilized in some breast cancers. Uh, they have been, um, there's been research in um, melanoma and other uh, tumors, but the PD-1 inhibitors inhibit another uh, a marker in the breast cancer or in the in cancer. Okay. Um, I have a question here that says, if the sentinel node is positive in triple negative breast cancer, is there a better outcome with auxiliary node dissection versus radiation? Uh, that has not been demonstrated uh, what, which modality would be more important. Uh, the idea is, is that if the sentinel lymph node is positive, it means that the uh, cancer is already spread to lymph nodes. So consequently, we usually utilize a combination of therapies uh, for those patients as well as a combination of uh, diagnostic procedures. Uh, we utilize the multidisciplinary discussion. So some patients may receive axillary dissection as well as um, irradiation, depending on the extent of tumor in the uh, axilla, as well as other uh, characteristics of the tumor. So each patient receives a recommendation based on their individual characteristics. And it's quite clear for this tumor that there is no one shoe that fits all patients. Uh, it's individualized therapy. Our next question is um, concerning the high risk of recurrence. Um, given just those high rates, what is the recommended follow-up and what questions should a patient ask their doctor to make sure they're staying on top of this? Um, so there are a lot of clinical trials ongoing now to determine what uh, the follow-up should be. Um, the follow-up should be, again, individual for each patient. It has been demonstrated that routine uh, follow up with CAT scans or other diagnostic imaging studies um, don't result in overall improvement in survival. So there is no standard one shoe fits all uh, follow up plan uh, that we utilize at this time. And kind of following that, the, the tracking of um, that kind of information to be able to make decisions, um, there's a question if there's currently any national database for triple negative information, such as age, gender, medications, um, along with the patient's diagnosis, treatment, and um, if it applies a date of death, and where that information can be found. Uh, there is no standard database that would contain all of that information for uh, triple negative breast cancer. What you're describing is called a registry, and there are multiple registries, but not one 
that contains the information for all of the patients. So the best way is to discuss it with your physician to see if the physician is a part of any of the um, uh, clinical trials programs where these data are collected. Well, thank you. Um, and any other last minute questions? Oh, one just came in, um, so please do keep submitting them. I just got a question from Mary, and she asks, um, how long have PARP inhibitor trials been offered? So the PARP inhibitor trials uh, have been utilized for several years now. Uh, they started as phase one trials, uh, and then subsequently phase two, and there are multiple agents now uh, in stage three clinical trials currently. Okay. Very good. Um, if anyone has any other questions, um, please do let us know. I'm taking them via email or through the chat box. Um, while we're waiting to see if we get any, oh wait, here's one. Okay, sorry, this question says, um, due to the propensity of triple negative breast cancers to have metastasis to key organs, do you automatically do metastatic screening as part of the patient's workup, or do you base it on tumor size, lymph node status, et cetera? Um, there is no one shoe that fits all uh, in terms of diagnostic criteria that we utilize, but each patient is evaluated thoroughly. Uh, we evaluate the size of the tumor, the histopathologic um, uh, status, that is looking at the tumor under the microscope. Uh, we evaluate the patient, what kind of medical problems the patient might have in addition to uh, breast cancer. Uh, so we use a lot of clinical characteristics of the patient we utilize the uh, molecular and the histopathologic um, characteristics of the tumor, and we put that together with what we know about the uh, therapy that the patient might have had for other medical problems as well as the breast cancer. So it's putting it all together for each patient. Okay, wonderful. Um, Pat, do you have anything you would like to say? Well, yes, I would like to thank Erica for putting all of this together. We appreciate that very much. And to thank all of the participants. Uh, the questions uh, were excellent. And um, I know that we will have this webinar posted on our website um, within a few weeks. Erica, do you know exactly when that's going to be posted? It'll be within one week. I don't know one exactly week? when. Yes. Okay. So let's say after a week it will be posted. And I know there was so much excellent information that we presented this evening that many people might want to access the webinar again to go over uh, what they've heard and what they've seen with the slides uh, a second or even a third time. So that will be possible because it will be posted on the website. And lastly, I want to thank our presenter this evening, uh, Dr. Edith Mitchell, for her wonderful presentation. It's uh, so helpful to have someone who is a leading researcher on the topic of triple negative breast cancer to make this presentation, because we know how uh, devastating, frankly, the, de the designation nation and the diagnosis is and how helpful it is to have a national uh, expert here uh, to answer your questions and to answer them in, in such a kind and thorough way. So Dr. Mitchell, uh, let me say I personally thank you for this and I know uh, that all who have participated uh, join me in that. And thank you so